Well hello and welcome to my latest video. Just had a little bit of excitement here. I was just about to come into the garage to uh, make this film for you and I saw a pigeon. A pigeon flew in, one of my wife's pet pigeons. So uh, it's flying around in the garage. I thought, God, how am I, I going to get this out? Anyway, I called my son because uh, he's uh, he loves pigeons and he came in. I said, bring your camera, dude, bring your camera. So he bought, he bought his phone and he was going into the garage. I said, he said, it's, I'm going to shit myself if the bird flies at me. I said, it's going to fly at you. How else is it going to come out? Anyway, he was, he was wandering about with his phone, taking some video. I'm going to try and put it in this video if I can, if I can fit it in. And then the pigeon flew out. He was going, oh, no, 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 no. Anyway, it was on, it was on the field. It was so funny, but maybe you had to be there. Anyway, a couple of days ago, um, I did a video about some essential uh, items which, which I take every time I go on a bike ride and, and I think uh, certainly for new cyclists and even experienced cyclists they're things you ought to take uh, uh, as well so uh, there's a there's a link to the video up there or is, is it up there it's around somewhere and um, various people saw it and commented on it and made various suggestions about things that, that they said they, they should take and said I should do a follow-up video so I was thinking that that earlier one was about things I take on every ride that I do but if I go on a longer ride, and I'm talking uh, probably more than four, five, six, seven hundred miles, you know, a, a kind of decent, a decent day out, then uh, I, I like to take some some other items just to be, just to be certain. And, uh, the first thing uh, I like to take is uh, is a bike stand. Um, now. You're saying, well, that doesn't look like a stand to me. Well, no, it goes into a special bracket. So if you if you stop somewhere, say if you stop in a wood or somewhere and you find a big a big tree, then you can bolt the bracket uh, to the tree like that. Or if you're you're uh, going past a large house, perhaps a manor house or a medieval medieval fortress or something, Stone Age fortress, and there is uh, uh, perhaps a drawbridge or an old portcullis block of wood, and you can bolt the the, the fittings to it, and this thing can just uh, be supported on that and you can put your bike in here while you work on it so particularly useful that if you're if you're cycling in bad weather you might think oh i wish i had some mud guards i wish i'd put mud guards on my bike now sometimes i put mud guards on my bike before i go out and sometimes i don't really want to ride with mud guards so what i do uh boys and girls is i take i take a set of mud guards like this uh they, they don't take up uh, much space I can fit these into my top tube bag on my on my bike and then if it starts to rain I can just take these out they uh, they fit on very easily with these easy easy, uh, easy connectors here and that means that uh, I'm protecting from I'm protected from uh, from splashing splashing rain and, and puddles and other unpleasantness so I, I highly recommend uh, if you don't want to put mount guards on your bike, then at least take a spare pair. You never know when you might need to use them. And you may pass some poor unfortunate who doesn't have mud guards on their own, in which case you can you can sell them a mud guard, you can sell them two mud guards, or if you see two cyclists without mud guards, you could sell them one each and uh, double your double your winnings. And uh, uh, you they could even rent the mud guards from you, perhaps, uh, until the main shower is over, and then they could give you back the mud guards and you could return the money to them at less a small amount uh, for your time and trouble. So always carry mud guards with you. Uh, they do fit in uh, fit in most saddlebags and most top tube bags as well. The first thing is a spare wheel. Now you might think this is uh, a little bit over the top, but if you're going on a long ride and your wheel wheel breaks, uh, wheel collapses, or, or you just have some kind of problem with it, then uh, having a spare wheel with you um, is very useful. Now, you might think it's very difficult to carry, but in fact, in the olden days, uh, you know, you, and you may find this if you talk to your, your grandparents, um, it was not uncommon for uh, keen cyclists who were then time trialers to ride along to the time trial with a spare pair of wheels uh, attached to their front wheel and then when they got to the time trial they would switch the wheels over, do their ride and then change the wheels back. And if you look at some, some old pictures of old films you can see that was actually quite common. So it may sound a, a little bit strange but uh, in fact it's very sensible. So uh, a spare wheel, highly recommend it. Just one thing to check, make sure it's the right sort of wheel uh, for your bike. You don't want to bring uh, a disc brake wheel if you've got a rim brake bike uh, or vice versa. And if you've got a Brompton but you're riding your, your road bike, uh, it would make sense not to bring a spare Brompton wheel uh, for your road bike because you may find that it won't fit. Now, another thing, and these aren't in any order, by the way, they're just, they're just things that I like to take with me uh, if I'm going on one of those long rides. 
And um, if, you, if you have to change your wheel, or you have to change your chain, or you have to do a lot of work on your tyres, or just, just uh, generally messing about on your bike, if you stop in a, uh, in a little village, or in a workshop, or something, somebody's front lawn, and you decide to tinker with your bike, your hands might get quite dirty. And Swarfiga, Swarfiga, one of the, uh, the best things that you can take to, to clean your animals. And it's not, not widely known, but this was discovered after some research in Canada then in fact uh, bears, uh, brown bears, uh, black bears, polar bears, uh, wild boar, uh, wolves, um, certain breeds of sheep, not all of them, certain breeds of sheep, uh, hyenas, uh, and even tigers, although you don't find those in Canada, are actually uh, frightened of swarfiga. So if you have a, a pot of swarfiga uh, in your panniers, or you've got some on your hands, and perhaps you're camping overnight, not something that I would do, obviously, uh, but if you're camping overnight, put some swarfiga around the outside of your tent, just sort of spread it, spread it around on the ground, and that will protect you from the wild, wild animals. So uh, useful, useful tip there. Now, um, if your bike does get dirty, and your hands get dirty, which is why you've got swarfiga, then uh, uh, having some bike cleaner uh, is also very helpful. I use, uh, th this is muck off, uh, spray on, wash off, uh, wax on, wax off, as the man said in that uh, famous famous film about the karate cyclist. Um, this is quite a big bottle, um, but if your bike gets very dirty then you may need to, call it, need to clean it twice, and if you're doing sort of seven, eight hundred, nine hundred, even a thousand mile journey, then uh, a couple of bike cleans uh, in that time is going to keep it looking pristine and very nice. Next item is uh, particularly in these in these times, and you'll notice instead it's also made by Muckoff, and it's uh, sanitizing hand spray. World Health Organization recommended alcohol formula. Uh, not something you should drink. Uh, I feel I should. I should feel I should point that out because uh, some people who watch these videos uh, sometimes get the wrong idea about some of the things that I say. But I am not advocating. Uh, that you, you drink this stuff, you certainly must not drink this stuff. Uh, it's uh, not like, like disinfectant that uh, a certain president suggested you, you, uh, uh, you consume to protect yourself. You should not, you should not consume uh, hand spray, sanitizing hand spray. It's only to, to sanitize your hands uh, after, you've, after you've touched something or, or somebody or been in a place where you might need to, to sanitize your hands. So a uh, big, big bottle, yes, it is a big bottle, but uh, I, I find that I use quite a lot of, of hand sanitizer. I actually went shopping um, to Blue Water in uh, Kent, big shopping center, for those of you who live uh, uh, overseas and don't know Blue Water. But every shop you go into, uh, you put a bit of hand sanitizer. Uh, I went into um, 37 shops and um, that was quite a lot of hand sanitizer, I, I've got to say. Anyway, quite useful to uh, take the hand sanitizer. Now, if you're doing uh, work on, on your bike, um, as, I, as I often do, you may find that your, your cable ends start to fray, and if you're doing a long ride, then the cable ends often do start to fray. So I like to bring a, a, a jar of spare uh, ferrules, uh, cables, what does it say, ferrules and cable end caps, because I carry a few jars of different things with me on a long ride, so it's useful to know what, what's in there. There's a couple of other bits and pieces in here, I'm not quite sure what they are, but I put a label on just to uh, make sure I don't get confused, particularly in the, particularly in the dark. Um, this, uh, this label uh, is reflective, so when I'm carrying my torch, uh, I can strap my torch to, to my head with a bit of duct tape, and then I can see what's in the jar. So if I need to do some uh, uh, bike maintenance, either late at night or, or early in the morning, then uh, I can find what it is. Now, I also find this, uh, this is a ruler, by the way, and this is by Park, Park Tools. And these, these, these holes in the ruler here, I put it up to my, put it up to my face like that. It's a bit like a, a mask, like you might see in one of those Avengers films. I'm, I could be, I could be Park Tool Man, couldn't I? Um, these are, what are, what are these for? Oh, these are for ball bearings. So if you've got uh, a, an old, an older bike, and you use steel ball bearings as opposed to a sealed, sealed bearing unit, then you need to make sure that when you're buying the right ball bearings in your local, uh, your local supermarket or uh, 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 other, other emporium that they're the right size and you drop, drop the ball bearings uh, through the hole in the, in, the, in the ruler like this and you can check that they're the right size so that's quite helpful there 
and it also it gives you measurements in uh, inches uh, which is what uh, uh, we use in Britain and uh, uh, other modern countries and then there is uh, um, what is this Cent centimet centimeters centimeters sorry centimeters and this is uh, uh, it says a crank crank cotter size not quite sure who crank cotter is and uh, it, it could be a misprint actually Frank Cotter that was it Frank Cotter played for Aston Villa back in the back in the 50s uh, and a spoke length gauge um, not quite sure what a spoke length gauge is as distinct from a ruler but it's it's anywhere there it's it's on the ruler so uh, you don't have to carry a, a metal ruler it doesn't have to be a part tool ruler uh, you can get one in uh, WH Smith's or other stationers um, office Home Depot is that what it's called or office office staples that was it staples not sure if they've gone out of business but anyway other shops that sell rulers will be able to sell you a ruler tire levers tire levers if you have a puncture and if you're doing 900 miles and you escape without a puncture then you're uh, a better man or woman than I am um, because I have a lot of punctures I, I like to carry uh, three three sets of tire levers there's a reason for this uh, these ones are uh, purely uh, sorry these ones here these ones are for front wheels now it's not widely known that tire levers are optimized for front or rear wheels and it's not a good idea to get them confused because it makes it hard to get tire off so these are front wheel tire levers these are these are rear wheel tire levers and this uh, this yellow this yellow pair here rather rather attractive shade of yellow I don't know if you can see that uh, and they clip together see they can clip together in a rather satisfying way anyway these are summer tire levers so don't use these in winter uh, I, I use the, the front front tire or the rear tire levers but I save these for summer just because they are they are specially designed for use in in hot weather they are uh, uh, have special UV UV protection on them and um, that means they're, they're less likely to get damaged in temperatures of over uh, 90 degrees or 33, 34 roughly in uh, centigrade. A chain. You will see in my previous video that uh, I carry a chain breaker and a spare chain and that's just if you, you break your chain and you need to repair it but it's also important that you check the wear on your chain and this is a this is a chain this is a chain checker um, you I'm not quite sure how to use it it's it's by park tool but I never read the instructions but anyway uh, I always carry it with me and I always check my chain the only trouble is I'm not entirely sure what my chain checker is telling me when I've checked checked the chain but it's also it's quite useful to carry it so I, I do recommend my doesn't have to be a park tool one um, a number of my tools are park tools uh, not for any reason other than the fact that they're park tools and I like the color blue uh, very nice color blue this this is very useful and in fact I quite often carry this on my shorter rides and what it is 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 first of all it's it's an extending uh, metal metal pole thing which I find quite 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 attractive but it's got a, it's got a magnetic magnetic end there so if you drop something a metal component in the workshop uh, I'm pointing this down. You can't see why I'm pointing it down, but I'm pointing it down to the ground. If you point it down, you see it'll it'll uh, it's magnetic. See, uh, if I've got anything, if I've got anything uh, here. Boom, boom. See, see that, see that's magnetic. See, it's oh look, I've, it's grabbed something. Look, there you are. Look, see that, see that. Oh look, there we are. Look at that. You see, so if you're if you're out on the trail trail riding that's uh it's a variation of gravel riding but uh, uh more enjoyment uh, more, more fun and you can get a special trail bike to go with your gravel bike and you drop something because you're doing some uh, maintenance work it's, it's kind of, kind of flexes it's kind of attractive isn't it? uh, and you drop something on the trail into the undergrowth uh it can be difficult difficult to find particularly if the ground has been scrubbed up by beers or be beers uh, bears or, or wild boars or, or other animals sheep for example then being able to to find that missing component with a, a magnetic tool like this uh, I can't remember where I bought this from this is by Volson Volson uh, 
don't know anything about Lolson, but I got this tool from somewhere. May even have got it in a pound shop. Um, would have cost a couple of quid probably in the pound shop. So I'll put this tool back on its special hook like that. Food. Ah, oh, food, food, food. Uh, nutrition is is a very important subject if you're doing long rides, and I, it's it's a good idea to um, sort of sort out and take the kind of foods that you you like, the foods you enjoy, but also the foods that aren't going to upset your stomach. So I I always take uh, a number of things. Uh, I take a small tin of tuna, tuna chunks like this. These are, these are John West, but other brands are available and uh, individually caught by pole and line so you can imagine that this is a this is a fishing fishing pole like that and look at that it's magnetic so the way they do it uh, in in canada and the north atlantic places like that is they they drop a a magnetic very long magnetic pole like this down down to the seabed and when they pull it up then the tin, the tin of tuna, which has uh, adhered to the magnetic pole like that, uh, comes up with it. So individually caught uh, John West tuna chunks since eighteen since eighteen fifty seven. Uh, they've been around for a long time. So tuna chunks is one thing I always like to have with me. Peanut butter. This is by. Sainsbury's so organic it says not quite sure what organic peanut butter is uh, can I read that no not really but peanut butter is very good for you very high in uh, what's it high in uh, protein I think yeah very high in protein uh, but also got quite a lot of fat in it um, but that can be very useful if you're on a long long bike ride and uh, if you don't know what a jar of peanut butter looks like after some of it's been consumed i took this with me on a long ride uh, a couple of weeks ago and that's why some of it's gone uh, so peanut butter and um, corn beef made with 100 percent beef uh what would beef be made of if it wasn't made of beef i'm not sure uh this is from brazil uh best before end of june 2024 so i've been carrying this for uh, quite a few years um, don't really like corned beef, but it is it is very good for you, and uh, it's very high in uh, what is it high in? Uh, uh, protein. That's it. Uh, no carbohydrate, uh, no sugar, no fibre. So not going to keep you regular. Quite a lot of fat, and uh, quite a lot of protein. And it says here ingredients: corned beef, no cooked beef, ninety five percent, beef, three percent. Well, if it's if it's ninety five percent cooked beef and three percent beef, does that mean that three percent is not cooked? Interesting. Uh, salt, and then preservative, sodium nitrate, and that would suggest that it's two percent salt, which is quite a lot of, quite a lot of salt. Uh, slice is best after a chill in the fridge. Uh, I don't tend to take a fridge with me on my long rides, but I often take a cool bag, you know, or, or a thermos flask. Uh, if you take a thermos flask, then you can open the tin uh, before you leave home, put the put the corned beef into the the thermos flask, seal it up. Now you'll say, "Oh, oh Julian, I don't think you, I don't think you do that because how are you going to get the stuff out? You're not going to use your your special magnetic tool to get the the corned beef out of your thermos flask. No, no, boys and girls, I'm not. I'm going to use some cutlery. And if I go on a long ride, I always take uh, cutlery. It's a very nice cutlery. It's a silver plated cutlery which I, I inherited from my uh, my parents and uh, one nice cutlery it is and if you're uh, well obviously as you know I don't I don't camp but if you go to a, an Airbnb or, or somewhere like that uh, it's always nice to have your own cutlery uh, I often take my own crockery as well uh, my own glasses uh, because you never know where some of this uh, some of these some of this stuff has been so if you have your own cutlery your own crockery doesn't take up much space in the in the backpack or the panniers then uh, that's uh, that's very helpful and the final item of food also high in protein these kidney beans um, I don't don't need to take a, a tin opener because you can see these got these special lids that uh, these are ring pull lids I'm going to open it now because that will leave me with a tin of kidney beans which I'll have to eat which I don't really want to do um, but if you've got if you've got kidney beans 
and you've got tuna fish and you've got uh, corned beef and you've got tuna uh, peanut butter, jar of peanut butter, uh, you've got the makings of a uh, pretty good and uh, pretty nutritious nutritious meal. So uh, I can I can highly recommend it. Nearly nearly finished um, because if you are um, you have a steel bike and you have a steel bike where the derailleur hanger is part of the steel frame or even if it isn't it's very important that that derailleur hanger is straight and properly properly fixed in the frame and this is a, uh, a derailleur hanger alignment gauge uh, could be seen by some people as uh, a little bit over the top uh, particularly when uh, not 100% sure of how to use it, but I, I, saw, I saw it mentioned in a GCN video, I think, and I thought, well, I need to get one of those. And there's nothing like buying something that you don't know how to use. But anyway, I will be learning how to use it because I always take a, a couple of uh, uh, repair manuals. They're, they're quite big, quite heavy, but they do repay the effort of uh, carrying them around on a long ride. This is Zin and the art of road bike maintenance. Do you remember a few years ago, quite a few years ago now, um, Zen and the art of motorcycle maintenance? Do you remember that? Dreadful book, but we all, we all read it. The other one that we all read when I was at university was, was Carlos Castaneda, which was all about uh, uh, tracking drugs. And it was absolute, absolute nonsense, complete nonsense it was. Same as Zen and the art of motorcycle maintenance, but we were young, it was the it was the 70s, it was the late 70s, it was the early 80s. And when you're that age, you're at university and you're, you know, you're having a good time, you read all sorts, of, all sorts of stuff and you think, ah, yes, that's it. The Dice Man. Do you remember, do you remember reading The Dice Man? That, um, that phrase of Woody Allen's when somebody said to him, you know, what would you do if you had life over again? He'd say, I'd do everything exactly the same, but I wouldn't read The Magus. That's a little bit of an in-joke there. Well, I wouldn't read uh, The Dice Man. It led to an awful lot of wrong decisions when I was a, a young man. Anyway, a couple of, couple of uh, books, very useful books, uh, repair, repair books to take with you. And you're, you're saying, well, gee, yeah, come on, come on. This is, this is nonsensical. You don't carry all this stuff. Where are you going to put it all? Well, I do. I do carry all this stuff. And I have this special bag, which is called a kit kit bricks and it says no fuss just organize it and you'd be amazed at how much stuff I can get into this kit brick bag and I just put it over my hold it like that and it goes on my back and I can cycle along and I can do uh, 900 miles with this in my back and I don't feel a thing so I hope you found this uh, video useful I hope you'll take a few ideas from this uh, for your next next long journey uh, if you have suggestions for things that you like to take on your video uh, or, or, sorry not on your video things that you like to take on your bike rides or things that you think I've just forgotten or, or would benefit from taking then please please leave a note uh, please leave a comment rather in the comments down below if you like my videos please subscribe please share and if I can just say finally there are adverts in the in these videos but any money I make up to a certain level I haven't quite decided what level yet any money I do make I will be donating to a local food bank so sitting through the adverts and sitting through my my videos if you find that uh, an unpleasant uh, way to pass the time is at least raising money for a good cause so thanks for watching see you next time and take care on the road Oh fuck! Oh fuck me! Fuck off!